Today we're going to learn some interesting things about surds, which are those lovely square root symbols, or root symbols, it could be square root, cube root, any time you see that radical symbol. First of all, what about addition using surds? For example, 2 root 2 plus 3 root 2, what would that be? Well, we have 2 root 2s added to 3 root 2s, so overall we have 5 root 2s. So with addition and subtraction, you can simply do the calculation as you would normally. For multiplication, it gets a little bit more interesting. For example, here's the key question. What is root 9 times by root 9? If you're not sure, let's work it out the old way, old-fashioned way. What is the square root of 9? The square root of 9 is 3. And the square root of 9, well again, it's still 3, hasn't changed. And 3 times 3 is 9. In other words, the square root of 9 times the square root of 9 is just 9. That kind of cancelling of the root always works. So if I asked you what's the square root of a number we didn't know, for example, root 5 times root 5, even though we don't actually know what root 5 is, we'd have to use a calculator and it would, it would go on forever. It's irrational. Irrational just means it carries on forever and will never stop. Root 5 times root 5, we don't actually know what root 5 is, but we know what the answer is. Just like with root 9 times root 9, it became 9, root 5 times root 5 is 5. Root 47 times root 47, again, we don't know what it is, we know the answer is 47. Let's try something even more interesting, though. What we're going to do is we're going to do root 2 times by root 3. Now I could simply just give you what the, what the answer is and what the formula is to work it out. But I, hopefully you're more curious than that and you want to kind of know where it comes from. So let's explore a little bit using thirds. For example, if I said what's root 2 times by root 2 times by root 3 times by root 3. What would that be? You'd probably say, okay, well, from what we did before, root 2 times root 2 is 2, and root 3 times root 3 is 3, so the answer is going to be 2 times 3, which is 6. And you'd be right. But that leads to something quite interesting, even though it may not look like it. Let's rearrange this sum. It's the exact same sum, but now I'm going to write it like this. Root 2 times root 3 times root 2 times root 3. I've barely changed it. I've just changed around the order a little bit. Let's put it in brackets. Now, we know the answer to this is going to be 6, because it's the exact same calculation that we were doing before. But what does that mean? Well, let's compare it to something else that we know about thirds. Hopefully this, you'll find this worth it. What's root 6 times by root 6? Again, you'd say to me, okay, well, yeah, I know that one. That's going to be 6 because it cancels out. Fair enough. But we know this calculation also comes to 6. Now just look. Look at that. So this comes to 6 and this comes to 6. What that actually means is that root 2 times root 3 is the same thing as root 6. If root 2 times root 3 times by root 2 times root 3 is 6, and root 6 times root 6 is 6, that means root 2 times root 3 must be the exact same thing as root 6. And it is. To cut a long story short, and you now know why, when you multiply thirds, you can simply multiply the numbers beneath them. So root 2 times root 3 is root 6. Another quick example, what would root 3 times root 5 be? Even though we don't know either of the actual numbers, we know the answer is going to be root 15. 
There we are. Now let's do some slightly more difficult calculations with thirds. You've got the basics, you know the theory now. The only question is putting it into practice. An exam question might be like this. Calculate the area of this triangle, of this right angle triangle. Well, the area of a triangle, as you know, is the base times by the height divide by 2. Many students forget to divide by 2. So in this case, we've got 6 minus 2 root 2 multiplied by 4 plus 3 root 2. So to represent that multiplied by, I'm just going to put it in brackets. Let's do this calculation. And we, we just need to remember to divide by 2 at the end. Okay, we're going to use FOIL, which is my method for multiplying out brackets. It's a method that um, many students like, but there are many other methods. So first, 6 times 4, which is 24. It's the le method that I learned at school as well, um, so it helps me to do it. 6 times by 4 is, 60, is uh, 24. Front times back, so we've done front times front, now front times back. 6 times by 3 root 2. What do you reckon 6 times by 3 root 2 is? That would be 18 root 2. We've got 3 root 2, and we've got 6 of those 3 root 2s, so we have 18 of those root 2s. Okay, next calculation. So basically, we just did 6 times 3, and then put the root 2 on the end. 4 times minus 2 root 2. So we have minus 2 root 2s. We times that by 4. So now we have minus 8 root 2s. Finally, the hardest one, the one we have to really concentrate on, minus 2 root 2 times 3 root 2. I see so many students, perhaps the majority of students, get a calculation like this wrong. So if you manage to follow this, Congratulations. Here's what you do when you're doing a calculation like that. I'll just write it out up, up here just so we can see it. We nearly, really need to focus on this one. What we do is first we multiply the numbers. So the minus 2 times 3. Forget the roots for a moment. Let's do minus 2 times 3. That is minus 6. So you do the numbers at the front first when you have these complicated third multiplications. Minus 2 times 3 is minus 6. Then you do the roots. So root 2 times root 2. What's root 2 times root 2? It's 2. So, this so that bit becomes 2. Finally, you need to multiply together your two answers. The answer you got when you multiplied the numbers. The answer you got when you multiplied the roots. Finally, multiply those two answers. Minus 6 times 2 is minus 12. There we have the multiplied out version of these brackets. Let's gather together like terms. 24 minus 12. Notice we're focusing on the numbers. You can't mix together the roots and the numbers. They're separate. 24 minus 12 is 12. 18 root 2 take away 8 root 2, so you deal with the third separately. 18 root 2 take away 8 root 2 is indeed 10 root 2. So we now have plus 10 root 2. And there's our answer. <laughs> Just testing you. Not quite. We haven't divided by 2 because the area of the triangle is the base times the height divided by 2. So let's divide all this by 2. And when you divide the whole thing by 2, you can just divide each bit by 2. 12 divided by 2 is 6. And 10 root 2 divided by 2 is 5 root 2. You don't divide the root 2 as well. Just divide the number on the outside. That was a whole load of interesting and amazing calculations using certs.